we would be honored if you would join us. A lot of people consider this to be their favorite Star Wars story. Here's Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. I have a bad feeling about this. I'm not afraid. You will be. So after they blew up the Death Star, the Empire still knew where their base was, so the Rebels had to pack their crap up and move to this planet Hoth, a snowy planet that just sounds terrible. I'm beginning to agree with you. And to make matters worse, Darth Vader wants to find the pilot that blew up the Death Star, like, really bad. Why? Well, he smashed his toy, and now he wants to beat him up. It's not fair! Plus, he had to just sit and wait for a ride after a really long time after Han shot him into space. Well, that was a long time ago. I'm sure he's forgotten about that. Anyway, Luke and Han are out riding their horned llamas looking for life forms, but Han wants to ignore the probe that just landed from a Star Destroyer and goes home. All right, don't lose your temper. I'll come right back and give you a hand. Luke is then immediately attacked by the Abominable Snowman. <laughs> and this is within range of Han being able to hear him. Han goes back to the base to give his report and says that he needs to leave. He still hasn't paid off Jabba, so there's a bounty on him. So he wants to go himself instead of sending somebody Jabba doesn't want to kill. Impossible man. He runs around telling everybody he's going to take off, and Leia's like, that's cool. And then he gets mad that she's not upset, and tells her she has a crush on him, and storms off. Well, I guess you don't know everything about women yet. As he's leaving, C-3PO tells him that Luke hasn't come back yet. It's not my fault. The gate officer tells him that the temperature is dropping too fast to go out to look for Luke. And Han's like, well, that'll be two of us that might freeze to death, and goes out to look for him in the dark. So the abominable snowman took him to his cave, and hung him like a slab of meat. But luckily, he left his lightsaber right underneath him, so he uses the force to pull it up to him. Okay. No, you don't get it. He didn't know he could do that. He just tried it, and it worked. Do or do not. There is no try. So he cuts himself down, and somehow doesn't land on the lightsaber right as the abominable snowman comes over to eat him. He cuts his arm off and runs out into the cold, instead of killing the wampa and staying in the cave where it's just a little bit warmer. You were lucky to get out of there. So he wanders into the snow, where he passes out, but gets woken up by the ghost of Obi-Wan, Hello there. who tells him to go see Yoda in the Dagobah system. Then Han rides up, and his Tauntaun dies while he's checking him out, so Han uses Luke's lightsaber to cut it open and puts Luke in it like it's a sleeping bag. What about Han? Oh, he had a pop-up tent, but the officers all thought he would freeze to death and even shut the front doors to the cave so they could stay warm. The next morning, the rebels take some ships out looking for their dead bodies, but find them alive and well. Apparently, the cure for hypothermia is putting somebody in a diaper and drowning them. I really don't see how that is going to help. Well, Han can't leave because they don't want any ships leaving until their shields are up, and Han thinks it's because Leia has a crush on him. I think you just can't bear to let a gorgeous guy like me out of your sight. And she's like, oh yeah, and kisses Luke to piss him off. Gross. And Luke's like, did you see that, bro? Don't say things like that. They pick up a signal that's coming in, and after 3PO says it's an Imperial code, Han goes to take a look. It sees Chewie, and Han shoots it, so now the Empire knows there's something going on there. It's not my fault. There's this one Imperial officer that thinks they're on Hoth, but his boss is like, nah. What are you talking about? Darth Vader insists that Skywalker is there, but I'm not sure how he knows his name. But then the boss looks at the officer like, you're gonna get me killed, dude. I'm glad you're here to tell us these things. So Han and Chewie are still trying to repair the Falcon, despite them trying to leave a bunch of times, and Luke is heading to Dagobah because of a hallucination he had when he was freezing to death. Maybe I'm just going crazy. So the Imperials come out of light speed too close to Hoth, so the Rebels know that they're there. So if they would have just evacuated when they heard the signal, they could have had a clean getaway. But Han had to shoot something, so now they're being attacked on moving day. They have to launch a ground assault, which pisses Vader off, so he force chokes the Admiral through the TV. He could choke him through the TV? Guess I don't know my own strength. The Rebels are trying to move, but the Empire is attacking with these big metal long-legged dogs. The armor is too thick, so they decide to trip them with a towing cable. And somehow now that they're on the ground, the armor is thinner and they're able to shoot them. It's not fair. The base is crumbling, so Han needs to get Leia on the Falcon. Vader is there and just misses them as they escape. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. And conveniently, the Rebels moved Luke's X-Wing with R2 already loaded, and they head to Dagobah. And I guess Vader had all of his ships follow the Falcon, because Luke has no problem getting off the planet. Easy, you call that easy. The Falcon is in trouble. Their hyperdrive is damaged, so they can't reach light speed. 
they have TIE fighters chasing them, so they head into an asteroid field. And let me guess, they go into it after somebody mentions how dangerous going into it is. Yep. The possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. The sad thing is, is in reality, the asteroids would be miles apart and this wouldn't be dangerous at all. Never tell me the odds. But they decide to hide in a hole on one of the bigger asteroids and kind of just wait it out. You didn't think I was going to run, did you? Luke gets to Dagobah and then all of a sudden his X-Wing gets stuck in the swamp and then tries to shoot Yoda. Well, he doesn't know it's Yoda, so Yoda messes with him and rifles through his crap. You don't belong going through people's apartments and things. And Luke is kind of a dick to him. I don't want your help. I want my lamp back. I'm gonna need it to get out of this slimy mud hole. Yoda takes a bite of his dinner, and then Luke throws it away because it has a bite taken out of it. He then tells Luke he knows how to find Yoda and takes him back to his mud hut. Oh, what's the matter? You don't like my house? My house stink? Back on the asteroid, they're still trying to get the ship working. In the meantime, Han and Leia get a little close, and then 3PO cock blocks him. Sorry, sweetheart. Time for anything else. The Imperial ships are being pounded by asteroids, but Vader doesn't care how many of his people die as long as they find the Falcon. Follow him. He sends the rest of his fleet in, but has his ship fall back so they can get better phone reception. The Emperor tells him that his son is the one who blew up the Death Star, and he's like, I think you're drunk. He could destroy us. And that's when it occurred to me. This thing that just happened, it could set me free. The Emperor wants Vader to kill Luke, but he thinks he can turn him, so the Emperor's like, do it. Yes, master. Even though R2 was told to guard the camp, he followed them, and is eavesdropping. Yoda keeps telling Luke to be patient, but he has a baby fit instead, showing Yoda exactly why he isn't fit to be a Jedi. No, I don't even know what I'm doing here. We're wasting our time. Like his father. How can you do this? This is outrageous. Yoda reveals that he was just acting crazy to test Luke, and he tells Obi-Wan, who apparently was spying on them. Yoda tells Luke that he's been spying on him for his whole life. You are reckless. And he's got a lot of nerve. You know what? All three of these guys have a lot of nerve. They know for a fact he's been hitting on his sister for years, and nobody's telling him. <laughs> he's also too old to be brainwashed into not having emotions or attachments. But Obi-Wan insists, so Yoda makes him promise that he'll stay until he's done with his training. And he's like, hell yeah, I will. I won't fail you. So the Imperial fleet is getting desperate to find him, and has resorted to just randomly dropping bombs on various asteroids. Leia sees a Minoc outside, <laughs> and they go make sure they're not damaging the ship. When they miss one, you make it so difficult sometimes. I do, I really do. They realize that they're inside a giant worm. Look who's here, the giant worm. That I guess sleeps with its mouth open. Yoda makes Luke give him a piggyback ride, and tells him to stop asking so many questions. They never even asked me any questions. There's this cave that Yoda tells Luke to go into, but tells him to leave his weapons. But he takes them anyway, so you can tell he's taking his training very seriously. But I've learned so much. Darth Vader comes around the corner. It's time to go. And they have a weird slow motion fight that ends with Luke cutting his head off. Well, if it works. The helmet explodes, and he sees his own face. I won't let these visions come true, Master Yoda. Sick of waiting? Vader holds a job fair for some bounty hunters to find the Falcon, but then the Imperial officers find them. We have them. But then they immediately lose them, so I guess they'll just keep the bounty hunters on retainer? Wait right there. Luke is levitating a rock while doing a handstand, but R2 tells him the X-Wing is sinking. Yoda tells him to use the force to get it out, and gets it to move a little, but then says it's impossible. You want the impossible. And Yoda's like, watch this, bitch, and gets it on land. Vader kills the officer that lost the Falcon, and we see that the ship is just sitting on top of the Star Destroyer. Their plan is to wait until they pollute space, and then go hide in the garbage. It's a good thing they know they have a compactor, because I doubt they'd get away with it next to some floating pizza boxes. They're planning on going to see this guy Lando Calrissian, an old buddy of Han's. This card player, gambler, scoundrel, you'd like him. But the bounty hunter Boba Fett apparently parked in the garbage chute and follows them to the Cloud City. They're tracking us. Not this ship, sister. Luke is back in a handstand levitating some stuff, and Yoda tells him to visualize, and he sees Han and Leia in trouble. We're in trouble. He wants to go help them, but Yoda tells them that he promised to finish his training. Always keep your promises if you want to keep your friends. They land the Falcon, but Leia has a feeling they should leave. You can just avoid any more female advice. Lando comes out and acts like he wants to fight Han, but then he hugs him, and the guards are like, All right, troops, this joke is over. Let's go. It seems that the Falcon used to belong to Lando, and he's not happy he lost it to Han. Hey. Remember, you lost her to me fair and square. 3PO hears what he thinks is R2 in a closet, 
and goes in to say hi, but gets blown up instead. Lucas decided to go save his friends, but Yoda and Obi-Wan fear he'll turn to the dark side and tell him to remember the cave. But they also call it a failure, and I seem to remember Luke cutting Vader's head off, so I wouldn't call it a total loss. Between ourselves, I think Master Luke is in considerable danger. Obi-Wan doesn't want to lose him to the dark side like Vader, but Anakin was manipulated for years. The Emperor is just using his friends as a trap. Luke still wants to go, even after the ghost of Obi-Wan's like, if you go, you're on your own, because you might go to the dark side, and it's best that I'm not there to help you stay on your path. Oh no, I'm not brave enough. Obi-Wan tells Yoda that he's their only hope, but Yoda's like, did you forget he has a twin sister? And Obi-Wan's like, did you forget she's the one in danger? And don't forget she's a politician and they're not to be trusted. Chewie finds 3PO in the recycling center and tries to fight some little guys over his parts. Lando interrupts a conversation about Leia not trusting him. Do you trust him? No. He's got no love for the Empire, I can tell you that. And then he takes them to Darth Vader, proving her right. Would you join me for a little refreshment? What are you drinking? Tank ray and time. They put Chewie in a cage and decide to lock up 3PO too, even though he's in pieces. They torture Han with a red light. This might hurt a little bit, okay? And Vader tells Boba Fett he can have Han after he gets Luke. His plan is to carbon freeze Luke and take him to the Emperor. You got a man, it's worth the risk. But he needs to make sure he'll live through the process, so they're gonna freeze Han first. Why you stuck up, half-witted, scruffy looking nerf herder? She hardly even recognized me. I've thought about her every day since we've parted, and she's forgotten me completely. And just like Padme, since Han might die, Leia tells him that he doesn't really creep her out, and that she really loves him. I love you. I know. I take it back. Then I'll see you in hell. I think he's a good man. So they handcuff Han at the waist, but apparently not very well, because when they pull him out of the carbon freeze, he's not handcuffed, and his hands are up by his nipples. He seems to be all right. Yes, he's alive. And in perfect hibernation. Skywalker has just landed, Lord. At last, we'll be able to capture that monster and end this war. Vader tells Lando to take Leia and Chewie to his ship, instead of having his own stormtroopers do it. You said they'd be left in the city under my supervision. You will not take her from me! Luke arrives to see Han being transported, and Leia and Chewie being kidnapped. Leia tells him it's a trap, and he's like, uh, duh, I know, and goes anyway. That is why you fail. Vader has someone controlling the lighting in the room for atmosphere. Skywalker, you're shorter than I expected. But instead of telling him to surrender and save your friends, they just have a fight. So it's true. You're one of them. Using his Apple Watch, Lando tells some bald guy to get some troops and help them. So after Lando apologized for the trap, since they got there first before he could warn them, making a deal where he could spare Leia and Chewie, and when Vader altered the deal in front of them, he calls for a rescue team. The thanks he gets is Leia yelling at him while Chewie chokes him. See, that's exactly why none of you have any friends. Five seconds after you meet somebody, you're already trying to kill him. And if they would have stopped trying to murder Lando, they might have been able to stop Boba Fett from taking off. Not a bad bit of rescue, huh? Meanwhile, Vader stupidly tries to relate to Luke, even though he's definitely not listening. It wasn't always like this. Once I was a normal person. A chump, just like you. Luke claims that he's full of surprises, like losing his lightsaber very easily. Look, before this gets out of hand, let's just talk about just No. He also goes right into the carbon chamber. I'm taking it now. But jumps out when it's activated. Yeah, you got it. Apparently not. Vader starts throwing stuff at Luke, and he breaks a window, and Luke gets sucked out. We lost something. I thought he wanted to take him to the Emperor. Shut up. He's gotta get him angry if he's gonna turn him into a Sith. Everyone else gets back to the Falcon, and they escape. Adventure. <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> a Jedi craves not these things. Darth Vader wants him to join him and bring balance. You, uh, every Marvel team up. Two superheroes joining forces for, like, a limited run. <laughs> it's from a movie that was really pop. I saw it. But Luke's like, nah, I don't think so. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Don't make me kill you. Luke has now gone out to this platform with no exit, and he gets his hand cut off. Oops. I'm sorry. You know, it didn't have to be this way. But keeps going out further. This is it, all right? Marvel team up, now or never. We could get him. I'll never join you! There's something I gotta tell you. This is something that's sort of gonna piss you off a little bit. He also tells them that Obi-Wan lied to him. Obi-Wan is trying to turn you against me. He told me enough! He told me you killed him! No. 
and he's his father. I'm Anakin Skywalker. So, what do you think? No! No! I've disappointed you. It's not true. That's impossible. Anything is possible. I'm not lying to you. He wants them to rule the galaxy as father and son. I, I can overthrow him. And together, you and I can rule the galaxy. Make things the way we want them to be. So Luke jumps off the ledge, but luckily falls on this antenna. Vader's like, well, I didn't see that coming. We call this a diplomatic solution. Luke uses the force to call Leia, and she picks up. She knows he's in trouble, so they go back for him. Lando's surprised that she was right, and she's like, uh, yeah, I can use the force too. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. They get Luke and the Falcon, but they're still under attack. They try to go into light speed, but the hyperdrive is deactivated. R2 knows this, but he insists on repairing C-3PO instead. When he realizes they're in trouble, he fixes the hyperdrive, and C-3PO bitches about not being finished yet. I'm standing here in pieces, and you're having delusions of grandeur! I guess he forgot the astrodroids are made to repair ships. Well, they end up getting away. Not again. And everyone's surprised that Vader doesn't kill anyone. I would certainly like to. So Luke gets a new hand. We got a whole box of hands if that one don't work out. It is fine. And Lando and Chewie go look for Han. Even though they already know where Boba Fett is taking him. I can draw a map if it helps. The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a subscriber yet. May the Force be with you. Don't get all mushy on me. So long, princess.